Scene 19, Slate 1, take 2. Focus, please. This is Lester. Lester Carrington. You're on the air. Please help me. I'm Duncan McLeod, I'm the writer of Dead Air and I'm also the joint DP and joint gaffer. So the story of Dead Air follows Lester, a local radio DJ who has been stuck in the 1am to 4am slot for over seven years now. He's very tired of his life, he had aspirations of bigger and better things and he pretty much has no enthusiasm for life whatsoever. One evening something happens um, within the story that thrusts Lester into the limelight and he all of a sudden becomes one of the most important people in the country, or at least he thinks he does. And it's a really interesting look at how somebody would deal with that kind of overnight success who isn't used to dealing with that kind of success and what that would do to him. The story really came out of a pub trip with myself, Jordan and Dan, where we sat down and we really wanted to make something really creative, something that we haven't done before and something that will push us on many levels. So I spent a good two weeks holding the script before I showed it to Dan and Jordan. After which we went through the scripts, uh, they pointed out any continuity errors, any sections which wouldn't work and we redrafted it a couple more times before we were ready to really start the pre-production process. On set, alongside Duncan, I'm overseeing the camera department, looking after um, sort of shot selection, lighting, um, and ensuring that we're covering everything that we need to. Pre-production is vitally important for any production, but especially when you've got a small crew. Because people are doing sort of a variety of tasks and doing multiple roles, making sure that everyone knows exactly what's happening before the shoot means that things go smoothly. We've, we've actually got a luxury this time of having a four day shoot. Actually, we probably could have just squeezed it into three days, but by spreading it out, we've given ourselves a little bit of breathing space, uh, which helps massively, but also having that pre-production done. So we've done all the lighting plans, we've done all our shot selection in advance, and that just means that we can quickly move on to each scene without having to sit around talking about it for uh, any length of time. I'm Simon Parkin and I play Lester and so my role is being the, the DJ who is saving the world in his head at any rate. So the audition process for Lester um, was quite a difficult one. Uh, it's a really specific role. Um, we needed somebody who could really pull off being a radio DJ and we learnt from a lot of the audition tips that we received for the role that that's not as easy as we thought it would be. My daughter saw a post on Facebook and because she knows what I do for a living, she thought, oh now, dad might be quite good at that. So she sent me the link and I then sent a link to some sort of showreel stuff that I had to Jordan, the director. And then he came back to me and said, we'd like you to do it. And instantly when we saw his tape, it was kind of perfect, you know, he has this great booming um, radio voice. So easy in the radio studio, like he, he fits the role. And we thought as, as soon as we had somebody who could do that and nail that part of, of the character, everything else would be easy and fall in place. After finding our leading actor, we moved on to filling the other positions of our crew. We've, we've worked with quite a few um, members before and we're really excited to bring them back onto the project. So we had Migler, who was our first AD. We had Tom, who is our script supervisor. We had Francesca, who previously was a runner on our shoots, but now she's our second AC. But then we needed to find someone to fill the role of sound recordist. And so we put our search out for a sound recordist in the local area and Jason applied. And after a meeting with him, we realized he was perfect for the job. He's really enthusiastic, he knows sound inside out um, and he was, he's been great to work with. 
So the DJ needs to sound like he's doing a radio show, so I brought lots of sound, well, acoustic treatment, the sort of panels that we can put in the room to make it sound more like a, a radio studio would, would sound. Listening in my headphones as we do each take is sounding fantastic exactly how I think it should be for the, the type of sound we want. If you've never called in before, it's 01632 961075. We're really, really privileged on the shoot to be using lenses from Cook Optics. Cook very, very kindly have lent us a whole set of mini S4s, uh, which we're really, really excited about using. As a team, we just fell in love with the look that you get from these lenses. There's a certain warmth to them. There's such a great ability for them to separate the subject matters. You can see just how well engineered and solid they are. For this shoot we're using them on our C200. We're really keen to see how the camera performs with a set of such high-end cine lenses. It's always great to challenge yourself and try and push the way that you're going to tell a story visually. So one of my favourite parts of uh, the film is we're going to shoot three continuous scenes um, with a 360 shot. So each little scene will is like a little vignette of a montage that will be covered in its own 360 and it will look as if it's just one continuous 360 shot. The pacing was perfect and it really adds like a new dynamic to the way we're telling the story and it really fits in with the frantic nature of that part of the script. Uh, the funniest moment I've experienced so far on set was literally just now when I've been under the desk in the set um, reading lines for the main actor because no one could be seen in shot because it was a 360 shot so I was there underneath the desk reading the lines, <laughs> cramped, <laughs> but it was great. My favourite part of the production has actually been seeing all of the branding everywhere. Dan designed the Cosmic FM logo and it's been amazing seeing this awful but amazing logo around everywhere and seeing everyone's reactions to it. In pre-production we've done a lot of work to create this whole brand behind Cosmic FM so we've come up with a logo um, and uh, we've had that printed onto a variety of different props and things like that so to actually have this radio station that now seems to exist um, is a really bizarre sort of uh, process really. I've put a lot of effort into making sure that the studio looks as authentic as possible. It, is just a meeting room in a business centre so to make it look like a radio studio um, has been quite a lot of work and just seeing it the first time that it was on camera and we could see exactly what it was going to look like um, was just brilliant. I love where we're up to funnily enough with the filming which is where everything just suddenly turns and it goes from Lester being you know a bit past his best a little bit grey in every sense to suddenly awakening and, and why he awakens is really interesting. Working with actors is my favourite part of the process uh, as being a director, um, so getting to spend all of my time on set working with the actor rather than having to drift between different departments is really great. Um, so having kind of a well-oiled machine as a production team is key to kind of getting the best out of everybody, including myself. You know, everyone is brilliant, it's, it's so well planned, it's so well well delivered in terms of the technical side of things, in terms of the creative side of things, so you know I'm just thrilled to be part of it. When I spoke to the guys they just sold it to me really well and I was just really interested in the in the story and the and the reasons they were doing it as well. So I think we're all on a on a similar level there. We find ourselves quite often being asked sort of what's the point, what are you getting out of it and um, I think it's an important question to be asked. Um, for us specifically it's a really really good opportunity to sort of push our skill sets, push our boundaries and see exactly what we're capable of given the opportunity. So we've not got anyone telling us what they want, it's literally um, we've got full creative control over this production which I think is um, a really refreshing but also really important to see um, exactly what we're capable of given that opportunity. It's been really exciting seeing the script being either read by actors or um, other members of the crew talking about their favourite bits. I'm really proud of how it came out. I'm really happy that the crew and the cast enjoy it and I can't wait to see what the final film looks like.
Dead Air is about Lester Carrington, who, <laughs> I won't say Carrington, okay? <laughs> Incredible. I think it was the best game of TIG we've had in a while. Probably, yeah. Fishbowl yeah. are the champions at TIG. Yeah. Oh. Keep it cosmic. Fine. Keep it cosmic. Keep it cosmic. <laughs> Keep it cosmic. <laughs>